So, <laughs> our first play is from the diary of an assistant bookkeeper. <laughs> Eleventh of May, eighteen sixty-three. Bucket, our sixty-year-old bookkeeper, took brandy and milk on account of his cough, and had an attack of delirium in consequence. The doctors are maintaining, with their usual self-confidence, that he'll be dead by tomorrow. So I'll be bookkeeper at last. It was promised to me so long ago. Collegiate secretary Grabsky is going to be charged with assault and petitioner who called him a bureaucrat. It seems definite. Took a decoction for guitar of the stomach. yesterday that I've not got guitar in the stomach, but instead concealed hemorrhoids. Very likely. <laughs> died. Ah, oh, must have been the alcoholism. Or the nagging wife. Oh, but what a shame. Who shall speak for him at his funeral? Oh, I know. Gregory Petrovich Vodkin should speak. He's such a fine orator. Well, I remember just this time last week at the tavern, he gave a fine toast for the formal three-day anniversary of our dear friends the Karanovs. Ah, oh, what a speech. Left us all with a tear in our eyes. And then he passed out, but my. <coughs> what a lord! I'll go find him. Well, that was easy. Gregory Petrovich! <laughs> Put on your coat, old son, and let's go. Uh, One of our lot has died, and we're counting on you to whiffle a few words as we see him off to the next world. I wouldn't have troubled you for a small fry, but this one's a secretary. One of the department, you might say. I'll have to send one of those off with a speech. <laughs> <laughs> the one who drank a lot? Uh, yes. Him. Oh, okay. There'll be, uh, pancakes, a good spread, Ooh. cab fares on us. So, uh, counting on you, son. Spin us sort of the Ciceronian palaver and we'll give you a right old thanks. Okay. I, I think I remember your secretary. You have to go a long way to find a bigger cheat and swindle than that now. Oh, Bless well, his soul. <laughs> shouldn't speak ill of the dead now. <coughs> True. But that man was a crook. <laughs> yes, he was. Let's go. <laughs>
24 hours later. Oh. Yes. <laughs> We've reached the cemetery. Wait! Stand back! I'm going to join him! <laughs> Unselfish, gun corruptible, uh, never accepted a single bribe. Devoted he was to good works. He was a stranger to the joys in life, even to the point of foregoing domestic felicity. As you will all know, he remained to the end of his days a bachelor. <laughs> and who will replace him as a colleague? How clearly I see before me now that tender face with that luxurious mustache. A mustache that could have slain the Nemean lion. A mustache whose beetle black sheen could blind a man. A mustache that could have seduced Cleopatra had they lived in the same time. A mustache that would make even Kieran Kiroshevich Melody green with envy. A mustache that certainly did not remind us of a Viking ship riding on a tempest. <laughs> but rather, if this mustache were a color, it would most surely have been the deepest shade of blue. <laughs> oh, Penelope herself could not have woven such a fine mustache in her tear drenched loom. <laughs> May you rest in peace, Prokofiev Sipich. <laughs> Sleep well, thou faithful servant. <laughs> Why does he keep saying Prokofiev Sipich? I don't know. Was that Mikhail Ivanovich clean shaven? Yeah. Prokofiev Sipich. <laughs> Your face, without that mustache, was plain, shall I say, Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> we were stern and unbending, but we all knew that behind that outer shell, there would beat a heart of purest gold. <laughs> and a great man, he was a heart of... But he's alive! <laughs> Luis! Prokofiev, head He's standing right there by the headstone. Prokofievich. Kirilovanovich was our secretary. Was our secretary. Then he transferred to second clerk at the second office. Now continue on. This is getting embarrassing. Oh. Um, okay. Uh, uh, had such a heart of gold. <laughs> he was devoted to good works and so youthfully fresh and pure. 
Three hours later, in Stoli's tavern. <laughs> Woo! Really put your foot in the door there. <laughs> Imagine burying someone who's still alive. <clears throat> A poor show, young fellow. <laughs> Poor show indeed. <laughs> that kind of speech may be all right when someone's dead, but when they're still alive, it's just poking fun. How did you put it? Unselfish? Incorruptible? Doesn't take bribes? To say that of a living person, you must be joking. <laughs> <laughs> and who asked you, young man, to sound off about my face? I appreciate your compliments to my mustache, <laughs> which I know is as virtuous as an infant born of Mother Teresa, <laughs> and as ostentatious as King Louis XIV's royal prisoners. <laughs> and I understand that I may be plain and ugly underneath, but why the fuck do you have to draw a <laughs> <laughs> No, sir, I'm downright offended. <laughs> of January, 1870. A dog was howling all night in Glocken's yard. My cook, Pelagea, says it's a sure sign, and we sat up until two, talking about how I'll buy myself a raccoon coat and a dressing gown once I'm bookkeeper. <laughs> and I may well get married. Not to a young girl, of course, in view of my age, but to a widow. <laughs> Grabson turned out of the club yesterday for telling a dirty story out loud and laughing at Snifkin, a member of the trade deputation, for his patriotism. I hear the latter's taking him to court. Must the guitar in my stomach to see Dr. Bakken? They say he's very good. <laughs> Thank you. 